the capability of this mcb is to operate under these type of conditions gives it short circuit rating in kiloamps in a general for consumer units a 6 kilowatt of fault level is advocate whereas for industrial boards generally 10 kiloamps of fault uh, capabilities or above may be required for my mcb this is a short circuit with standard capability what we discussed for the breaker for the consumer generally for us 6 kiloamps of fault current is advocate it's fine for us but for the industrial boards where you are selecting the mcb for industrial purpose then you should it should be a 10 kilo kilo, kilo amps of the fault capabilities or above may be required for mcbs and if i am talking about the type of the curves in the mcb we are having different types of curves in the mcb a b c k z sum so what are these generally b c d k j a is also there a is similar to the z so mostly we are not uh, using that widely used one is b c d k z b c d k z b c d k g now b is the b curve generally we will use the b curve when i am having a cable protection if i if i am using this mcb for cable protection then uh, generally it will trip at 3 to 5 times of the rated current if i want to trip the breaker the mcb 3 uh, to 5 times of its rated current then i will select a beaker which is generally used for cable applications and for all domestic applications lights fans uh, whatever so generally i can uh, give up to 5 to 10 times of its rated current so for domestic purpose generally we will use seeker and if i am having a motor which is having a higher starting current then i will use deeker which is uh, which will operate at 10 to 20 times of its rated current and the k curve generally preferred if i want to trip this mcb for 8 to 12 times of its rated current generally this is also a motor application but with higher with higher inrush current higher inrush current and the jet curve is generally used uh, to operate the mcb within 2 to 3 times of its rated current so a sensitive elements so is a semiconductor devices electronic devices this is also for a motor so if you are uh, suppose the load is a lights fans load then i will prefer c c uh, a curve of mcb the magnetic characteristic of this mcb and if uh, if i am selecting the uh, for the cable application a cable which is running from here to other so it is protecting some cable so there i will use beaker for motors d and k curves and for the electronic and semiconductor equipments z curve so when i am selecting the z curve it means that the mcb will trip at 2 to 3 times of its rated current if i am selecting a c curve it see it it means that my mcb will trip having a trip characteristic the threshold 5 to 10 times of its rated current it will trip at the range of 5 to 10 times so this is the application where we are using different types of curves uh, across the uh, loads so what type of load you are going to protect or going to connect from your main uh, distribution board so these are the different types of uh, mc mcb curves and mcb selection and if you just uh, recall if you just uh, uh, recall our uh, single line diagram i am having two transformers and these two transformers are coupled with air circuit breakers these are the air circuit breakers and these are connected to the loads these are connected to the loads 
and I'm having a switch, which is a manual switch. And this is the DG set. DG set is connected to the emergency loads. So one of the emergency load is connected to the battery charger. This battery charger is converting my AC to DC and it is giving to all the DC loads. And I and the emergency loads of DC, the relays, operating coils, and the lights and SAS inverters. So I am providing again a supply from my battery bank. And these are the loads may connecting to some other distribution board. And from this distribution board, it is connecting to the switch boards. And from the switchboards connecting to the fans, lights, so on. So the number of sub-distribution boards depends upon your project. If it's a simple small project like one megawatt or two megawatt scale project, so number of distributions will be distribution boards will be less. And if it's a small factory, then also it would be less. But if I am talking for a, a big substations or big power plants like 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt, or 1000 megawatt, or 1 gigawatt of solar, so these distribution boards are uh, the, the number of distribution boards will be high. Because of the area was uh, more, right? So if you are taking all the uh, cables that from one point it would be very very uh, costlier for you because of the cable co because of the cable and the cable trenches. So in the cases of the main uh, substations, big big substations or big plants, solar plants like 500 megawatt solar plant or 1000 megawatt solar plant, generally what we preferred is we are using the same setup, this setup. Suppose this is my solar plant of 1000 megawatt. I am using this setup here and I am feeding the loads for this. And I'm using the same setup here and I am feeding the loads for this. Same setup. So this will decrease my cable cost and also the rating of these transformers, everything. If I'm selecting the transformer to cat to for entire all the loads, the transformer size will be very, very big. And the all loads are depending on only one transformer. If this transformer fail, whole four blocks will fail. So to make a to maintain a reliability, I am increasing this setup several times. Like the, here I am having two transformers, DG set and battery, battery charger. And this is using for this block. And I'm using this rule. So this will decrease my cable cost. It would be the economical solution. Even though you are increasing the number of transformers, the trench, the cable losses, everything, the reliability, everything uh, would be good uh, compared to the single uh, mode of uh, uh, supply. But if I'm talking about uh, one megawatt scale or 0.5 megawatt scale, then only one uh, for the substation, only one uh, set of this setup is required. If I'm talking about the plants, uh, solar plants, then we required four or five setups of this. And again, you have to think for this block, how many loads are there? And these loads are failed, what would be the happen? So you have to do the reliability analysis for this, for this, for this, and for this. So now it, uh, it might be result, it might give the result that I'm talking about the solar, so only 12 hours of generation. So here, maybe this much of setup is not required, only one auxiliary transformer itself is required. No need of all this, only auxiliary transformer and battery bank. That's it. Depends of the load and depends upon the uh, application, depends upon the project and uh, uh, downtime, everything. Probability of failures. 
So you have to do the reliability analysis and at all these cases, if you are uh, dealing with a high, uh, large scale megawatt plants. So this will use my auxiliary distribution. And in some cases, what they will do is, they will place an auxiliary transformer here and they will place auxiliary transformer here. And they will place auxiliary transformer, auxiliary transformer, they are feeding, right? So, and they are connecting this auxiliary transformer bus to this auxiliary transformer bus. This auxiliary transformer bus to this auxiliary transformer bus to maintain reliability. If this auxiliary transformer is failed, then this auxiliary transformer is feeding all these loads. And if it fails, this will feed these loads also. Kind of a reliability, running a one only one cable from here to here. Good. So you have to think, uh, it depends upon the project to project team. So it's not a standardized design. You can design based on your uh, requirement and the project uh, totally depends on the project specific. So this uh, about the auxiliary system distribution, AC as well as the DC. DC feeding from a battery, ba battery chargers, if battery charger failed or AC power failed or the output exceeding or uh, if out, output required the the, the load required more the output uh, actually I'm getting exceed from the battery charger, then my battery banks will uh, comes into the play and they will support the system. That already we discussed in our uh, last uh, session. So this, this is about the auxiliary system distribution. This auxiliary system distribution is quite good for 33 kV by 220 kV systems and for low voltage levels. And if I'm talking about a big substations like 220 bar 400 kV substations, 400 by 765 kV substations, and more than that for ultra high voltages, then what would be the case? You cannot step up, step down the power up, uh, step down the voltage directly from 400 kV to 415 volts, right? So there you required a other setup of aux uh, auxiliary system distribution like you are taking this auxiliary distribution from the nearby substations, direct supply, as we are doing for the industrial plants. Or else, if you are having some 220 kV or 400 kV network, you can step down again a 220 kV to 33 kV, 33 kV to 11 kV, which is a costlier, uh, sorry, 33 kV to 415 volts, which is a costlier thing because you are placing a 220 by 33 kV transformer. Nowadays, the auto transformer, which is stepping up the 220 kV to 400 kV, having a tertiary winding, which is placed for stability purpose. So you can use that winding, which is rated for 66 kV. So you can take the 33 kV voltage from that and you can, or 66 kV uh, from that, and you can step down to the 415 volts and you can give this auxiliary supply. That can also be done. Then what about the reliability there? If the transformer failed, entire auxiliary, trans auxiliary system will fail. So the next option is I am taking a out outside supply from the nearest grid substation. Auxiliary supply I am, I am taking to my station. So this is the uh, general uh, different types of uh, ways to uh, explore on the connectivity of this auxiliary system distribution team. So if you have any doubts, you can ask now.